Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today we're having a singing lesson. When I was growing up, I was always singing, always. And my sisters were constantly saying, please stop singing, <laughs> stop. Stop! And eventually it would go, Mom, make him stop! And then my mom would call out from wherever she was in the house, Leave him alone, the child is singing. <laughs> so I. God could, bless your mom. <laughs> exactly. I just kept going and going and going. And it was something that I, I don't know why, I can't even remember what I was singing, like the songs we were learning in French class in elementary school, probably. But that's amazing. It was always a form of comfort to me. And it was in university that I decided, you know, I think I would really like to learn how to do this properly. And that was when I sought out a teacher in Toronto and I started going to regular singing lessons just for me. This was something that I never wanted to become a part of my career, but I felt like I love singing so much just when I'm alone and I would like to know how to do it properly, as is the case with painting and pottery. And since then, in every country that I've lived, in Canada, in Germany, I found a singing teacher in Germany, and now here in New York, I have taken singing lessons off and on, whenever the wallet permits. <laughs> and today I have with me my singing teacher, Laura Kay. Laura, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, I think most people think that professional opera singers like are born, we pop out of the womb and we're just like immediately singing opera. So we're just, you know, wow, but I did not know anything about opera at all until I got to college. Mm -hmm. So when I got to my undergrad program, I saw a poster try out for the opera and I was like, mm, that sounds like fun. So I did um, and I fell in love with it immediately. And I, after that, I just ate it up. I could not get enough of it. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. So you decided in college that you were going to become an opera singer? Yes. And then you studied classical singing in college? Yes. And then you graduate, and then what happens? I did um, what most people in that position do. I moved to New York. Yeah? Moved to the big city. So I could do what they call is the, the audition circuit. Once I lived here, I sort of fell in love with everything that happens in New York. And it sort of became um, uh, multifaceted. Now there are lots of spokes on the wheel of my life. It's not just performing all the time, um, which I think a lot of people think when you, if you, if you picture an opera singer, some people picture the horns and the braids and the... Brunhilde. Yeah. Ooh, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not just that, it's sometimes that. Yes. But it's also um, teaching, it's performing for, um, I, we're going to meet a friend later, Evan, who um, teaches for a composition class and I will perform some of his students' works. So being in New York, it makes it possible to do all 10 of those things in one year, rather mm -hmm. than just, I'm just gonna sing in three operas, for example. It's fascinating to me that in this city when I encounter professionals that are artists and musicians, the, the thing that we just assume is that they're, they're doing one thing. Right. This person is just painting, this person is an opera singer, so they're just on the stage singing. But when you start to learn about the reality of, of the arts, it's very difficult to get roles, and artists yeah. have to do many different things to make a living, not just singers, but I don't even know what I do. <laughs> if someone was to ask you me, do everything. What, well, when they say like, what do you do? What, and what's your profession? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. Please ask me something I, else. Just make it work. <laughs> Oh, 
I do want to say that I sing just for me. Yeah. Still, the reason why I still continue to take singing lessons, there's no goal in mind of making a profession out of this, but I'm always singing when I'm by myself. I very rarely have whatever ear pods. Yeah. Whatever they're called in, in your in my what ears. Kids call those what are those kids call those things? <laughs> I when I'm on my bike and riding around New York City, especially at night when I'm riding home alone, I'm singing. Sometimes at the top of my lungs, when I'm that. in here, I'm singing. I kind of enter my own little world in my head, and it's been fascinating to learn when I hear myself like ooh. <laughs> that does not sound good sometimes. Is singing in Italian and you think you, you think you're saying the right thing and then someone tells you you're not pronouncing that word properly. <laughs> and this this is the goal. When I'm singing, I want to know that I'm doing it in a healthy way. Yes. And in a way that actually would make me happy about what I sound like. There's so much technique involved in this process like everything else in the arts and that's why we're here. You want to make sure that you're preserving your instrument because you want to do this forever. You, you want to be able to do this when you're 80, 90, dead. <laughs> well, I'm going to sing on my deathbed. I do plan on singing O Terra Dio. I love Verdi. that. Like right before I die, I want you to- You have a plan. I have the plan. I want like the orchestra to be there and I want to be singing that and oh I want the, you, the soprano to be singing with me. You've got a contract. I do. So this, this I have to say, you got to take care of this then. You well, I know. Well, be... this is why I'm working on this. I do have a soundtrack playing along in my life. Incredible. Not just classical music. There's often Tamil cinema music. There's often traditional Carnatic South Indian music about like Meenakshi, Beautiful. the fish-eyed goddess. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah. And and these these pieces of music pop up and they do in a serious <laughs> way. These pieces of music have added so much richness to my internal life. Yes. Like yes. When I'm riding home at night and the moon is full above mm -hmm. my bike and I see that moon, there are no words that I could say to the moon to tell the moon how, how I feel about how beautiful it is. But what comes to mind is Rusalka singing the song to the moon. Right. But when I sing that at the top of my, my lungs yeah. alone in fake check, that does it. <laughs> that releases this feeling. The yeah. music is the only thing that gets out this feeling of awe. And that's the case with so many aspects of my life. So even in death, yeah. I, would like, I would like if I could orchestrate it for, that's the, for that to be the end. The, so that's why being healthy about this is so important. Totally. Yeah. So this is Evan Fine. Evan, thanks for joining us today. It's really great to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Evan is a wonderful composer. He's a modern composer. And I'm not really crazy about modern music, but when I go and hear Evan's pieces, I'm, I'm always just blown away. And his album just came out called Over Under in October. Please check it out. Evan, you're going to help us through this singing lesson, which is a luxury for us. Let's begin with breath. Breath is the most important part of singing, if you ask me. Um, breath is the engine in the car. So it is the thing that fuels the vocal folds. If you do not have uh, a good breath underneath you, everything else is going to suffer. So when you're breathing, a lot of people are going to breathe high up into the body naturally. But to breathe to sing, you're going to want to breathe into the lowest part of your body. So down here. Can you show us what that looks like when you take sure. a big breath? You're going to want to release those muscles, these abdominal muscles. Excellent job. Someone's been working. So when you fill up a water balloon, you turn on the water and it goes sploosh yep. into the bottom. That's what it's going to feel like when you fill up with that air. Okay. Good. So now we're a little more prepped and ready for when we allow the air to leave. So after we warm up, 
this is what happens. I bring pieces to Laura that I would like to learn. Sometimes she suggests a piece for me to learn based on where I'm at skill-wise. And then we chip away at the piece and that's how we work on technique. So today I thought it would be interesting to share with you the process of singing something that I've never sung with Laura before. Something I've been singing I think since I was like 14 years old wow. on my own, I don't, just faking the words. Yeah. Because you've probably all heard this before. So this is from Rigoletto by my favorite composer Verdi. And I thought this would be a very interesting thing to show you how we start tackling a piece. So she's never heard me sing this before. I've never sung it with Evan before. This may be a, a total train wreck <laughs> because we've never done this before, yeah. but this is how this we is actually how we do, do it. it. Yeah. La donna è mobile, qual piuma al vento, muta l'accento e ripensiero, sempre un nobile. Leccia troi riso, e tanto e riso, no li amore, la donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muto la cento e ripensier, e ripensier. One of the great things about singing in Italian, singing Verdi, and singing this aria in particular, is that it's big. So, I want to kind of open things up a little bit to start. Okay. So, can you say, wow. Wow. That's amazing. Look at the size of your mouth. That's incredible. La donna è mobile. La donna è mobile. Excellent. So now I want I want to do the first phrase up to uh, pensiero mm -hmm. on a lip trill, mm -hmm. just to get that breath moving. And I want you to think of this as, like I said, out of ten. I've known a few Italians. Okay, when they are sad, nothing is sadder. When they are angry, nothing is nothing is worse. Right. So this is not going to be. This is right. I want you to like lift trill the crap out of this. Okay. Yeah. So much better. So much better. And your instinct now is to go. Right? right? What happens when you do that? All kinds of water balloon. Instead of, oh my god, am I singing this in front <laughs> of these people? <laughs> right? Evan's going to play, mm -hmm. and you're going to monologue this, which is what you were hoping, I would say. I know. And you're, and you're going to, oh, please God, and you're going to go, La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento e di pensiero. You're just going to speak it in okay. rhythm with the same, it's out of ten, okay. whatever the issue is. La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento. Muta da cento e di pensiero. Excellent. Can you tell me, when you were at a ten, did you notice what anything about what your body did? No. Because you, you were in it. I'll, I'll tell you what I noticed. Okay. Your mouth responded to that instruction. Okay. So you went, la donna è mobile. I don't know if you did that on purpose, mm -hmm. but there was much more la donna. There's going to be room in your mouth now for La donna è mobile instead of La donna è mobile, right? Because we need all of that space back here. So can we try singing it now? I want you to be at a 10. That does not mean when you, all of this, that you let go of this. Okay. Right? So you, 
la donna immobile. Right? From here, with all the space in your mouth. La donna immobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento, eri pensiero. So much better. So much better. Now, we're going to add one more thing. Because this is really the crux of the entire aria. Okay. So I think you can practice the whole thing this way. Yeah. I'm going to do it two ways, and I want to see if you can tell me what I'm doing differently. Okay. This is the big test. La donna immobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento e di pensiero. That was one way. Okay. La donna immobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento e di pensiero. Connecting. Oh, okay. All right. Connecting. Okay. Connect everything. Sorry. <laughs> La donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento, e ripensiero. So much better. This is 100% different than it was when you sang it the first time. Thank you so much. So that, that's what a lesson is like. I encourage everyone out there, if you've ever thought about learning how to sing, find someone close to home, take a lesson, one or two, and then start trying it out while you're washing the dishes or while you're doing your laundry or even in the shower. That's the traditional place. That's right. Because you will not only be contributing to an interest that you've had in your head, but you'll be supporting other artists out there. Laura, I want to thank you so much for being here. Evan, if you'd like to turn around, <laughs> I'd like to thank you as well for being here. And uh, we're just going to continue singing for a little bit. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, amazing. both of you. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you.